What is it about this question that signals to you, oh, this is related to the normal distribution? Have a look at the question. It says normally distributed. Okay, so just... Now, I, I know that sounds... I'm making a big point about this, but this phrase here, right, just noticing that it's there, often students look at a question like this, especially by the time you get to the end of the HSC course, and you will have so much language in your head that you'll be like, wait, what is this question even about again? So you need to look for tags like that so you can orient yourself, think about where on the formula and the data sheet you can get some relevant information, all that kind of thing, okay? So you've got means and standard deviations for these different brands of light bulbs. So they could be anything, okay? So let's just start at part one, which is intended to be a bit of a warm up before you get to part two. Morning, sir. You want to see Manny? Manny's, yeah. Just okay. So they're just asking us first. They give us the hypothetical that if you got one of these light bulbs, brand B, like that, and it happened to last for exactly 400 hours, what would be the Z score for that particular bulb? So I know you usually have the formula data sheet there. However, the formula for Z score is pretty simple. Does anyone remember what Z is equal to? It's the score of your particular thing, which in this case is 400. You subtract the mean and then you divide by the standard deviation. Very good. Either S or, or this funky symbol here. Okay. So we can really quickly work out what this specific Z score is. Can you do it with me? Um, you said it was 400. That was the specific score. What's the mean? Look carefully, we're in brand B, so it's going to be 500. Now, immediately you know, and it should make sense to you, oh, I'm going to have a negative Z score there, and that's because... It's less, than it's less than the average, it's below the average, right? Then I'm going to divide by... Cool. Okay, so on the numerator, I'm pretty sure that's negative 100. Negative 100 divided by 50 is... Cool. So I have the Z score for that particular light bulb. Now, part two, um, and this often is the case, part two is going to directly follow on to part one. So keep what we just worked out, keep that in your mind, and let's read. A light bulb is considered defective if it lasts less than 400 hours. And the following claim is made. Brand A light bulbs are more likely to be defective than brand B light bulbs. Pause for a second. We had a look uh, last week at a pair of golfers. Do you remember that? And we looked at their scores on different uh, a game of nine holes or whatever it was. And one of the questions was asked to, you know, argue why this golfer is better than that golfer or, or vice versa. Okay. Now I want you to have a look at the data. Why do you think they would make, anyone would make a claim like that on the basis of that data up there? Any takers? When you have a look at brand A, the mean of brand A is 50 hours less than the mean of brand B. And often, like the mean, the average is kind of your go-to for when you're trying to work out, is this, a, is this better or is it worse? Okay? So you can see why people might argue, well, brand A probably is worse off, because on average, they seem to be worse off. Is the claim correct? Hmm. So some of, you, some of you are kind of shaking your head. Some of you are uh, a bit iffy. And I don't think it's absolutely clear just yet. So how are you going to work it out? This is a um, two mark question and then provide a justification for your answer. Any takers? Yeah, Laura. Um, maybe you could find out the Z score using the same 400 hours. Yeah, so we worked out the Z score for a 400 hour light bulb, which is, you see why they chose that time by the way, right? 400. 400 for the borderline of defective light bulbs. We did that for brand B, okay? But we can do it for brand A as well. Let's have a go at that now. So I'm gonna call this one up the top, the Z score of the B light bulb, because that's what question one was about. And now I'm gonna work out the Z score of the A light bulb, if it lasted exactly the same amount of time. So what am I gonna substitute in my formula? What numbers are we gonna put in? 400. Take away 450, because that's the new mean on my new group of data. What will I divide by? 25. Cool. There's a different mean, there's a different standard deviation. Okay. On the numerator, I'm pretty sure that's negative 50. 
negative 50 divided by 25 is... Okay, so this is helpful. You're noticing kind of like, oh, that's a bit suspicious that you're getting exactly the same number here as you got there. That's a plus, but how are you going to, you need some words here. If you're gonna justify something, you need to say at least a sentence. The two numbers are exactly the same, but what does that mean? Why, like, is the claim correct or not? No. So you disagree with the claim, mm -hmm. but why? Manny, what were you saying? Okay, now this is really helpful. Let me just repeat that and then I'm going to ask you to draw something with me. The percentage of light bulbs that are below this 400 hours threshold, okay, is going to be the same for brand A as it is for brand B. Here's how I'm going to convince you. Uh, if you've got some space there, I'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit. In your books, I want you to draw, are you sick of this yet? Draw me as a normal distribution and it doesn't have to be big or pretty, but we need to be able to put some Z scores on this, okay? Okay, now, like I said, doesn't have to be beautiful. Um, and in fact, it doesn't even have to be big. There's not a huge amount of information we're going to put on here. But I've got a normal distribution for A and a normal distribution for B. Watch how I put information on here and hopefully try to illustrate Maddie's exact point that the percentage of faulty light bulbs will be identical. Uh, let's do A first. So you can see right there in the middle, because it's a normal distribution, that's where you're going to find 450. Okay, so that's the mean. And as I go standard deviations down, we just worked out your 400 hour lasting light bulb has a Z score of negative two. So I'm gonna go one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and there's all of your 400 hour light bulbs. Okay, so you can see uh, down here, let's, uh, let's shade it like this. Down here, this is how many light bulbs in brand A are faulty, right? Or are branded as faulty. Can you remember enough about the percentages to work out what percentage that, this is not required, but it's useful to flex our muscles. This is gonna be 2.5. Where do you get 2.5 from? 100 minus 95 and then divide by 2. Okay, so within two standard deviations. Why is it two? Two. Because there's one on either side. Okay, on either side, and I said I'm Z score negative two at the moment. Within two standard deviations, I have 95% of the population, which means that outside of that, I've got 5%, but I've only, I'm only looking at the bottom one. Uh, that's right there. Does that make sense? So that's 2.5%. 2.5% of brand A are faulty. Okay. So now I'm going to go over to brand B. It's got a different mean and a different standard deviation. What's the mean? Have a look. It's 500. You can see that from the table. Okay. So right in the middle, I'm going to write the 400. But again, part one told me that if I go one standard deviation, two standard deviations away, brand B is much more variable. It's much more spread out. That's what the larger standard deviation means. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's why I still get to this 400, even though uh, my mean was so much higher. So when I go to highlight again, these guys over here for brand B are still the faulty light bulbs. And because it's still after Z score of negative two, it's the same, two and a half percent. Does that make sense? Okay. So those pictures are gonna help, but how would you word that? Can I give you a, maybe a minute or so, just to think, how would you write a single sentence that would explain this is why the claim is not correct because? Can I give you a second to think about that? Just you know, take some time to think about how you craft that sentence. Okay, so uh, maybe you looked at that and you're like, okay, I get all the maths, I get all the maths or the numbers at least. You can calculate the Z scores, but you do have to be able to articulate what's going on. That's what that justify word means. So here's, I cheated a little bit, I used two sentences. Here's the way I said it. Light bulbs at the defective threshold, you didn't have to use that phrase, but I didn't have a more succinct way to say it. Things that are right there or below are gonna fail. 
um, light bulbs at that threshold have identical Z scores. And I think it's important that you highlight that they are the same and refer to the value that you just worked out, right? You're using the data, you see with reference to Z scores or standard deviations, you're highlighting what you've done in part one and part two in your calculations in your justification. Uh, therefore, and this is the other key phrase, the same percentage is faulty. That was what we were doing when we established the 2.5% thing. Okay, so that's why the claim is not correct. Do you have to say the same percentage? What would you... Okay, so amount is a tricky word. Um, I think percentage or proportion or share or even ratio, any of those words were to be okay, but amount is a bit tricky because say for example, brand A makes millions of light bulbs and brand B is a small company, right? Well, the same amount is not true. Um, whereas the percentage captures that it's 2.5% of these guys, if that's a lot or a little, and 2.5% of these guys, since I calculated percentages, then I'm gonna use them in my word, okay? 